you're not waiting on God when your preferred time frame becomes the basis for your decisions. You and I, we all would prefer God to do things faster, yeah? Can you just hurry up and get us a place to live? Can you just, God, can you hurry up and, and direct my family and I where we need to be going and, and give us a job to direct us there? God, can you just change our financial situation already? We're waiting. God, can you get me over this, this, this cancer and this physical uh, issue in my body? Can you just get me over it already? We're, we're waiting. There's a time frame. There's a time frame. Can you do it faster? And we have this time frame like, I'm believing and expecting God to do it in so-and-so time frame. You might call that faith. If it's not a time frame that's rooted in scripture or confirmed and validated by God, it's no longer as faith-filled as you think. It's not faith when you go, God, I'm going to hold you hostage to my preferred time frame and I'm going to call it faith. It's not faith. Faith is actually trusting God's timing is better than yours, even when you prefer he does it faster. And you go, I want you to move faster, faster, faster. But even with that desire, I'm willing to wait and trust that your time is better. Now that's faith. Not going, God, you will do this in this time. It's going to happen tomorrow. You're going to get me a car. It's going to arrive in my driveway. I'm going to open the front door and go, what a surprise. I believed. You don't hold God hostage to your time frame. That's not waiting on him. Abraham and Sarah seem to be doing that. Well, God didn't do this yet. Maybe never. A, a, a not yet turns into a never. Isn't that weird? How we go, well, God hasn't done it yet, so he must never. And we exaggerate and blow things out of proportion. That's what's happening here. And Abraham and Sarah, they scheme. They, out of their own human wisdom, their worldly understanding, and they assume to know what's best. Guess what they don't do? They don't consult God for this decision. They did what was right in their own eyes. They leaned on their own understanding. Who did that in Genesis 3? Adam and Eve. They reached out for what they wanted in their timing, on their terms, instead of trusting God and consulting him and running to him with that desire, with that frustration, with that confusion, they leaned on their own understanding and said, oh, I think we'll take this for ourselves. You're not waiting on God when you take his promises into your own hands. You're not. If God has told you something and confirmed it over and over through prophetic voices and other godly people in your life and just over and over there's this confirming word of I'm going to, this will happen. And you take that promise or something you can see in scripture, sanctification, and you take that promise into your own hands and you start, well, if God hasn't moved yet, let me get to work. There's a difference between faithful service that's in, in faith and hopeful expectation, right? as opposed to, I'm gonna do this stuff because I don't trust God's gonna come through as fast as I want to. There's a difference. A lot of us work and we're going, I'm faithful. I'm just a man of integrity. I'm just a hard worker. No, you don't trust God and you're not willing to rest in him, right? While you're doing your part, you're doing more than what he's told you to do. You're doing a lot more than he told you to do and it's actually causing frustration. God never told Sarah and Abram, go take Hagar. They did that themselves and created all this frustration and, and all this destruction in their life, okay? So when you don't wait on God and you take his promises into your hands, you're presuming to know better than him. And you go, well, God's plan, his method, his timing isn't good. I'll come up with a better one. We hear this from atheists all the time. Well, if God was real, he would, oh, papas, you're assuming to get your understanding of the world is ultimate? And God should, you know, submit himself to that. You're holding God hostage to what you believe is best, to your, un your limited understanding of the world. Isn't that funny? We do the same thing. And when you don't wait on God, it sometimes looks like I assume to know better than him. And since he's not moving as fast as I want, and since he's not doing it the way I want, since I don't see any progress or movement in my life, I'll take matters into my own hands. I know you told me you will. Maybe I'm the way you're going to do it. Again, we'll get to this in later episodes. Waiting on God is not inactivity or laziness. But it's also not presumptive action. Where I'm self, I don't know, relying on myself and doing stuff and making it happen myself. It's not self-centered. Okay? When you're scheming and planning and trying to figure out something without consulting God, or trusting on, in him and leaning on his word, you pro, you're not waiting on him. 
You can call it hard work. You can call it I'm faithful. Not as holy as you think. <laughs> and when you're not waiting on God, you don't consult God before you make a decision. You don't look to him in all your ways. You lean on your own understanding. You define what's good and evil. And so when, I'll tell you this, you're not waiting on God when you act without consulting God or his word. If you make a decision that was not at all through the filter of God's word, or what does God think about this? Who is he as I'm doing this? What does his word say about this? God, what do you want me to do when you don't do any of that? And you presume to know best and you act out of the flesh, you're not waiting on him. You're actually assuming to know better than what his word says. And by the way, look at, look at this. This, this is what they say. Sarah goes, hey, go into Hagar. Weird recommendation, Sarah. I thought you're my wife. It may be I'll obtain a child by her. It's not even concrete for sure going to happen. It says maybe. They're acting on a maybe? How many times do you and I act out of a maybe and we make it more sure than it is? So, so they're doing what seems right. It'd be different if they're doing something they knew would work for sure. Instead, it's maybe the Lord will give us a son. It's not a concrete fact. They acted on a maybe without consulting God to confirm that suspicion. It's different if you're like, maybe God will do something. We'll see this with Jonathan in future episodes. Jonathan has a suspicion. He's the son of Saul, King Saul. He's like, I, I want to go over there and destroy the Philistines. Maybe God's going to go with us. Let's kind of set some stuff up to let God confirm along the way. That's very different than Sarah and Abraham going, maybe God's going to use Hagar. Hagar! It's very different. They're acting on a maybe. They're assuming their suspicion is correct. You're not waiting on God when assumptions or uncertainty drives your actions. You're not waiting on God when your suspicions, your assumptions, or uncertainty is driving your actions. How many of you guys are making decisions right now based off pure suspicion, based off a maybe, an assumption, and uncertainty. Whether it's where to move or who to get married to or should I get into a relationship with them or should I jump into a business venture with them or are they trustworthy? Should I reach out to them again? You're making decisions based off those pure things. And you're assuming to know what's best and you're doing what seems right. There's a difference between doing what's actually right and what seems right. If you think something's right, you can at least bring that to God to let him confirm or deny that it's indeed right. The last thing is this. Abraham and Sarah were willing to abuse Hagar in the process. Regardless of how much you chalk this up to culture, that there's abuse going on. Do to her as you please. Deal harshly with her. There's, there, there's this minimizing the value of Hagar as an image bearer of God. Okay. Okay, regardless of like, well, he's a concubine and he's te she's technically his wife now. They grew so impatient that they were willing to disregard the well-being of those around them. They were willing to hurt people in the process. They were willing to step on someone to get what they wanted because they so didn't trust God. When you don't trust God, I'm going to tell you right now, you end up doing things that not only hurt people around you, that not only cause destruction in the lives of those around you, but also things that you potentially never would have thought you'd ever do. When my son really wants something, and my, my daughter, she'll just walk into the playroom, there's toys everywhere, right? Never go into a playroom, because there's nowhere to step. She'll grab a toy off the floor. It's like a, something goes off in him, and he's like, someone has my toy. He could be like on the other side of the planet. And he's like, someone has my toy. He sprints into the playroom, right? Finds her on the floor playing with something he hasn't played with in weeks. And he goes, give it to me. That's mine. And he rips it out of her hands. And if she's not, if she's got a strong grip, man, she got that gorilla grip. So if she's holding on tight, right? She'll, he will hurt her in the process to get that toy out of her hand. He's not willing to be patient. He's not willing to come to his parents and, and wait on us for a solution. When he really wants something that, that she has that's his, he'll take matters into his own hands. He'll even hurt his sister to get what he wants. And he's unwilling to wait for it. And I'll go, buddy, like, this is the conversation we need to have all the time. 
do you love your toys more than your sister? No, I love my sister. It didn't look like it. Like she got a bruise on her cheek. And you're missing two legs now because she's just that much strong, stronger than you. But it doesn't look like you were patient and loved her more than your toy. It looked like you loved your toys more than her. So you have to start asking yourself, do you love what you're going after more than you love God? If it's indeed something different. Or, right, another question. Are you really willing to disrupt other people's lives in the process just to get what you want. Maybe you're not going to hurt someone directly. Maybe you're not going to blatantly like cause them injury. But are you going to disregard the well-being of those around you to get what you want? That's probably evidence you're not waiting on God. 